All right, we're going to go ahead and get started on the next presentation, which is utility web mapping applications for campus operations. If you just joined us, the way this works is we're going to do a 20 minute presentation and we're going to save questions for five minutes afterwards. And from there, there's a five minute transition period where if you need to get to another session, you've got five minutes to do it or you can hang out for the next one. So giving this presentation is Andrew Futrell. He's a GIS AutoCAD technician at NC State University. He's with the Utilities and Engineering Services Department within Campus Operations and Maintenance at the University. He maintains several utilities that serve NC State University. This includes water, chilled water, steam, primary and secondary electric, stormwater, sanitary, sanitary sewer, and natural gas. So it's all yours, Andrew. Well, good afternoon. I'm Andrew Futrell with NC State. Um, I've been with NC State about eight years now, and I've gotten to see kind of GIS kind of grow from the ground up with the uh, utilities. And here's my slide here. So to kind of give you some background, uh, we're pretty large. We have about 5,000 acres of land in Wake County. Some of our infrastructure is over 100 years old, going back to the 1890s. We operate five utility plants, operate three substations, we also generate about 60 megawatts of electricity, and we have several utilities uh, in GIS, uh, including water, domestic reuse, irrigation, telecom, primary and secondary electric, natural gas, steam, heating hot water, chilled water, sanitary sewer, storm water, and also several miscellaneous and other unknown utilities. Uh, so to kind of give you some backstory, prior to my role, there were two kind of key people that kept track of infrastructure for the campus, uh, and that was the former university surveyor and plan room librarian. Uh, both, of the, both of those individuals had about 40 year careers each, so they, they started like in the 1970s and retired in the early 2010s. And uh, I quickly learned that uh, people in facilities, particularly my group and several other departments depended solely on these individuals for information about infrastructure, you know, water lines, power, sanitary sewer, storm water, anything that was underground or above ground. Um, so my role was created in 2015, and right away people were bugging me all the time for a utility-related request. And I was new to NC State, and I had no knowledge of the system. And um, researching records was very time-consuming, and I was often left with a lot more questions than answers. And on top of that, I had all my regular tasks, you know, creating maps, updating one-line diagrams, regulatory documents like for stormwater, spill prevention, updating our CAD GIS standards, and also just maintaining our authoritative CAD drawing, which has now been converted into GIS. So here on the right, that image, that shows an example of one of our CAD files. And there, were, there was one of several versions of this CAD utility drawing that I inherited. And right away, I realized there was a lot of edits and contradictory information between all these versions of the CAD drawings. So my work was really cut out. And at that time, the um, compare tool that's now available in AutoCAD was not available in 2015. And uh, NC State, our utility information, our systems are very dense. And we have other utility owners on our, on our property, including City of Raleigh, Duke Energy, Dominion, and also private development. And uh, we have a lot of records. We have a lot of as-builts for hundreds, if not thousands, of pro projects over the history of the university. And it's all in a web-based storage system called ARIES. That's short for Architectural Engineering Real Estate and Surveying. It's a really good resource, but finding information is very challenging. Trying to filter by year, by project name, having institutional knowledge is very key for finding some, some of those key pieces of infrastructure. And on top of that, uh, I found we've had some abandoned utilities that were supposed to be abandoned that were active, just to add to the complexity and also our GIS group. I'm the, I'm the sole GIS person in my group, but we have about four to five people across our facility division at NC State, so we're, we're a pretty small shop. Uh, so we had a timeline getting from CAD to GIS. We started with stormwater. Actually, we started with the functional requirements when I started, but stormwater was our first utility we converted. That was kind of our pilot involved my department, our environmental health and safety group, and also our grounds group. So it was kind of a good test bed just to see how different groups could contribute information and data. 
And from there, we converted our water, then our sanitary sewer, chill water, steam, our primary and secondary electric. Um, our telecom is managed with, by a different department, but they're interested in GIS, and then our natural gas is our smallest system, but it's mostly maintained by uh, Dominion Energy. So once I converted these um, CAD utilities into GIS, I began populating data. So kind of the priority I looked at were things like age, material, pipe diameter of like water lines or sewer. Um, and also kind of secondarily looked at things like elevation data, rim elevation, inverts. So some of that was manual entry from project information. Some of that was derived from LIDARs. And also we've used some vendors to help su to support some of that data. And, um, but more importantly, I, be, I saw the opportunity to link projects that we have in our records-based system, ARIES, to our utilities. So things like a water line, I was attaching uh, a link um, from our web-based system, ARIES. And also, um, we use a work order management system called AIM. So I saw the opportunity to link things like transformers, backflow preventers, uh, so our, our planners and estimators, I can kind of zoom around on our web applications and just easily pull up uh, work order history for those items. So I'm kind of going to give you kind of a highlight or overview of some of our web applications. So utilities viewers are probably our biggest GIS success story at NC State within the facility group. So I'm going to kind of give you kind of an overview of that and just show you how I've done things like attachments with our manholes, electric and steam, assets and aim, like our backflow preventers and also projects that we maintain in our, in our web-based storage system areas. And from there, from, from the data I've populated, I've begun to generate uh, dashboards to kind of visualize the data. So looking at things like pipe material, pipe material water mains or hydrant flow tests to look at our pressures, our you know, flow rates, uh, sewer inspection, insulation type for our steam utilities, and also just kind of highlighting our active infrastructure that's 50 years or older that's underground. So here's kind of an overview of our utilities viewer, and you can see it's, it's very dense. Um, under our utility, utility, utility layer list, we have about nine uh, utility group layers that, you can, that users can turn off or turn on and just look at individual areas, look at you know, water lines. So to kind of give you an example, this is an example of just our street light circuit. If you just want to look at street lights, you can pull that up or Utility locator uses this a lot because he's able to dive in and just look at one utility um, that he's trying to trace out, you know, a, a circuit. And this can be done with, like I said, with any utility. Um, so here's an example of one of our electric manholes. Uh, we have these butterfly drawings that kind of show uh, kind of four quadrant, four quadrants with inside that confined area. So like north, south, northeast, south, and west facing walls. So you can identify which duct banks are active, you know, where the empty or occupied conduits are. And similarly, I've done that with our steam manholes, uh, like when we're planning outages with our steam system, we can identify where our traps, our drain points, and our valves are, especially if we're complying with lockout tag out. And also our assets that we track in AIM, which is our work order management system. Here's an example of our backflow preventers. Um, planners can easily pull up work order history. They can look at type, size, manufacturer, and the last time that that asset was inspected. And I've done this for all of our assets, uh, transformers, switch gears, generators, grease traps, and then we're looking at other assets to AIM, assets to AIM add to our system as we continue to grow. So I've talked about ARIES, that's our web-based uh, record storage system. Um, during COVID, when I was working from home, I saw the opportunity to link these hundreds, if not thousands of projects to our feature classes. So here's an example of a waterline connection here. And from that link, you can pull up photographs of that connection and you can also pull up drawings of that utility. And um, so, as I mentioned earlier, I got pinged a lot for information about utilities when now people with access to our utilities viewer can find this information readily accessible. And so it saved time for not, not just for myself, but anyone within our facilities group or outside contractors that have access to this web application. 
So I'm gonna shift gears now and talk about our dashboard. So with the data I've begin, begun populating, now I'm trying to visualize that um, for our stakeholders. So here's an example of our water mains on campus as color-coded by um, material type. So blue represents ductile iron, black is cast iron, and red is asbestos. So rather than having spreadsheets kind of show where our needs are, now I have a visual representation that shows where an old water line is and what buildings are impacted by that system should it fail. Uh, similarly, we flow our hydrants every year. Um, I've used this to identify where we have pressure discrepancies looking at the history. Uh, we found where we have closed water valves as a result of this. So I have it color coded by the, the flow rate in gallons per minute. So blue is the best, green, yellow, red, ye yellow, orange, and then red. And then also in the upper left hand corner, it's probably hard to see um, field crew notes that's been recorded as well. So things like obstruction or code enforcement issues or hard to operate valves. So we, we inspect our sanitary sewer system 10% uh, annually and I have that color coded by the year inspected. And that's something else I've been tracking um, that our distribution engineer and our planners are looking at and we're just using this as a visual aid to just make sure we're in compliance with inspecting our system. So we also have steam on campus and a lot of that was built, you know, decades ago and a lot of the material types or insulation types before 1990 were asbestos. So anytime we're working on those systems, I've identified where that is still on the ground. So if we're doing repair work, we know we have to do things safely and abate those areas. And then this is kind of the final uh, dashboard I put together. This highlights our old active utilities. So anything that's 50 years or older and active, this dashboard shows visually where those are. And I'm kind of highlighting um, in red an area where we're planning a future building, which will be our integrated science building. And, and as part of the, that construction project, we're planning to replace a lot of infrastructure in and around that building site. And I kind of made a note in the bottom left-hand corner, uh, we're currently replacing all of our old electrical system and kind of in tandem where we're closing down roadways or other highly trafficked areas like uh, pedestrian corridors, we're trying to replace water lines as well while we're impacting you know, traffic to both uh, pedestrians or vehicles. And like I said before, you know, a lot of this information was tracked and stored in spreadsheets and now visualizing the data, our stakeholders are getting a much better uh, picture of our needs, you know, especially when you have millions of dollars of research at stake uh, for a university. Uh, so post GIS discoveries, um, we have a lot more utilities than what we realized. Um, so every feature class went up significantly. Our sewer inspection, for example, we do 10% of our system each year that increased from 8,000 to 13,000 feet. So that's a pretty significant amount. Um, several assets we weren't tracking, backflows, grease traps, transformers. These are things that I've worked with our planners and estimators to identify who owns and maintains that system. So that kind of, depending on the location, depends on what department, what the group's responsible. Uh, and also I've discovered a lot of discrepancies with utilities that we don't own, like with Duke, Dominion, City of Raleigh, and other private utilities. And in some cases, uh, new easements have been recorded as a result of those discoveries. So as I mentioned, uh, we have a lot of users now for our, our web applications. So we have over 150 that are utilizing Utilities Viewer. Um, our utility locator is probably our biggest person. He's our boots on the ground. So any changes, corrections he sees, that information gets relayed to me, but also our surveyor, planners, uh, construction, field techs, engineers, architects, real estate, all these different groups are utilizing uh, these applications now. And over on the right-hand side, there's kind of a, a diagram that kind of shows all the different kind of groups, partners. So utilities is probably our biggest thing that is getting shared and utilized internally within, within NC State as far as GIS goes. And we've identified subject matter experts and champions. And that kind of concludes my discussion.
So any questions? So we're working on that. So mo most of the time, like things are tracked in AIM, which is our work order system. And right now it's just kind of a link, you know, but we're trying to figure out work working with our AIM team how to transfer data back and forth, whether it's a one way, you know, it's that's that's in the works though. Yeah. Yes. Um, that's a good question. Um, I know we have a lot of backups of the data on virtual servers and stuff, but it's, you know, it's, it's still kind of in its infancy, though. Um, mm. yeah. Oh, yeah, Laura, Laura might be able to give you a little more insight. <laughs> Oh, okay. Go ahead. There has been, and like uh, Meredith was mentioning, budget is kind of a big constraint we have. We we got a bill for one utility, and it was much higher than we expected. So we're exploring options. But yeah, my boss has been pushing to get models of like hydrology, stormwater, you know. You know, we we kind of had the data, but yeah, we're yeah, it's getting there. It's it's that's a next step for sure. So, any other questions? Yep. Yeah.